as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, hunt for huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Ask Mother, she knows. Yes, Mother knows that quality comes first in a food. That's why delicious Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. What's more, Mother likes the fact that wheat or rice shot from guns makes an easy-to-fix, economical, deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. For added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. So for a taste-tantalizing, nourishing treat, enjoy Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. <laughs> the heavily loaded sled moved downhill through White Pass. The driver of the dog team was in high spirits. Hello. Get along there. He had struck it rich, and he was on his way to civilization with enough gold to last the rest of his life. The bells on his dogs rang gaily. Neither dogs nor driver knew that death was waiting at the bend. Grab those dogs. Hang on to them. Don't let them get away until we get the cargo. Three men rushed forward. Two took charge of the dogs, while the third made sure the driver was dead. Hold those dogs, Joe. How about the driver, Pete? He's dead. Now, leave him there in the snow. Get the gold sacks off the sled. I'll take the dead man's gun. What about the rest of the stuff? I'll pick out a couple of blankets and a parka. I might need them for evidence. Leave the rest of the supplies. Speaking of evidence, you had a coat button you were going to leave here? Oh, yeah. Here it is. I'll just toss it on the sled. Yeah, we're leaving a lot of footprints. And this wind, they'll soon be covered. I got the dogs under control, Steve. Now what? I'll take the gold with me and hold it until we can get ready to split. You go to town right now? Yeah. You hold the dogs here for an hour so I can get the gold well ahead of them. Yeah, we'll let them go in one hour. Think they'll go to town? Yeah, I think so. Wherever they go, Constable Aiken will find them sooner or later. And then he'll start investigating. Steve Murdoch ran an assay office in Goldville, a small town not far from Whitehorse. He was calling on the constable when a man rushed into the room. Hey, Constable Aiken. You better come outside right away. Why? Right, what's wrong? A uh, team of dogs had just come in hauling a heavy sled, but no driver. No driver. The outfit's right outside your door. You see it? Yeah. Come on, Steve. I'm with you. Looks like there's been foul play, Constable. There's red stains on the handles of the sled. Yeah, there it is. Hey, that looks like Lem Atterbury's outfit. Yes, it does. It is Lem's outfit, Steve. You see the stains on the handles? I see them. The last time Lem was in town, he brought samples of high-grade ore. I gave him an assay. He said he struck it rich. Uh-huh. Doesn't seem to be any gold on the sled. No? Not a speck of it. Maybe Lem was robbed. Might be. Constable, looks like you got a robbery and murder on your hands. Hank, you and Jim unload the sled. Put everything in my office. Hey. Then take the sled and dogs to my place and leave them. Bring back my own outfit with plenty of blankets in the sled. Hey, Constable. You're going out, Constable? As soon as possible. When his own sled was ready, Constable Aiken and the two men set out on the back trail through White Pass. In due time, he returned to Goldville with a dead man. He was at his desk studying the dead man's property when Steve Murdoch entered the office. Uh, Come right in, Steve. I hear you found Lem Atterbury. Yep. Shot through the head. Coroner called it murder. 
Of course it's murder. Uh, where'd you find the body? Same place as we found that man a year ago. The man Bill Andrews shot from ambush. You don't say. I figure the killer hid behind the same rock. You find tracks? No, no, they were covered. But I have a clue, Steve. A good clue. Yeah? Well, what's that? This button. It was on the sled. Oh, maybe you want to add a barrel. No, no. No, it's not. It doesn't match his. I think the killer lost it when he unloaded the gold. Hey, that button's likely to hang the killer. Of course, it's only circumstantial evidence. The same as we had against Bill Andrews. What? The jury didn't hang him. They but jailed him. Bill Andrews. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, I forgot. Andrews was your friend, wasn't he? Yeah, we... We've been friends for a long time. I, I still call on him at the jail in Whitehorse. Mm, sure enough. He... He helped me work my claim on Spanner Creek. And after that, he worked for me in the office. I remember his working in the assay office was one of the points against him. He was in a position to know who'd be coming through the pass with Rich Paydirt. I... I never believed that Bill was guilty of that murder a year ago. There was a lot against him, Steve. His mitten was found near the dead man. Paydirt in his room. He had no alibi. <laughs> At least he has an alibi for this murder. Constable, I... I'd better tell you something. You'd learn it anyway. What's that? Bill doesn't have an alibi. No alibi? Why, he's in jail at Whitehorse. You can't beat that for an alibi. He's not in jail. What? He broke out last night. Great day. Are you sure of that? Why didn't I hear it? Well, you were out looking for a lamb when the news came in. Listen, Constable, I've... I've stuck to Bill through everything because I didn't think he was a killer. But You've now... been a good friend, Steve. Maybe I was wrong. To make it worse, I told Bill about Lem Atterbury. Dead? When? Two weeks ago when I visited the jail. I told him that Lem had brought in a high-grade sample of ore. That he was coming in from his claim on the first of the month with gold enough to keep him for life. That's it. Bill Andrews is our man. Of course, there's revenge as well as robbery for the motive. Revenge? Well, Lem served on the jury that convicted yes, Bill. Yes, you're right, Steve. We've got a strong case against Bill Andrews. It'll be clinched if this button came from his coat. This time he'll hang for sure. If you can find him. We'll find him. He'll have to hide somewhere until he can get food and clothing for the trail. Now, let me think. Where would he hide? He knows the Spanner Creek region. And that's between here and Whitehorse. Yeah, that's right. Do you still own that land on the creek? Well, yes, but I, I never go They'll there. work there for you. He knows there's a cabin on the land. A cabin, but no heat or food. I can think of a more likely place on Spanner Creek. Where? Widow Morton's house. Would she hide him? Well, she always liked Bill, and her daughter and Bill were mighty friendly. I think they'd hide him, especially if they didn't know about today's murder. I'll call on them. I'll go with you, Constable. Suit yourself, Steve. And while you're talking to Mrs. Morton, I'll go on up the creek to my property and see if Andrews is hiding there. All right, Steve. I'll take a couple of my friends in case he's armed and wants to fight. That makes me mad when I think of the way I believed in him, the dirty killer. Word of the murder traveled to Whitehorse, and everyone was discussing it when Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, came in from patrol. The Mountie heard also about the jailbreak of the night before and decided to try to track down Bill Andrews. King got the scent inside the jail and followed it across the snow. Though Bill's tracks had been covered, the scent was in the air for King to follow unerringly to Spanner's Creek. <coughs> what is it, King? King halted near an abandoned cabin. Used to be a gold claim, but it hasn't been worked in some time. Oh, you're looking past the cabin, King. The dog was trying to tell his master that someone occupied a small shed. Probably one had been used for storage, about a hundred yards from the house. <laughs> he looked at the sergeant and then toward the shed and whimpered softly. Then he advanced a few steps, paused, and looked back at the Mountie. So that's it, eh, King? And we once hiding in that shed. No windows there, but he can probably see through cracks in the boards. He's probably watching us. I wonder if he has a gun. That's a chance we'll have to take. Hold it, King. I'll go ahead. Heel, boy. I said heel. King obeyed the command and moved quickly to his master's left knee and advanced with the sergeant. The two had covered half the distance to the tool shed when Preston called. You in there, Andrews? Andrews, I want to talk to you. I'll kill you. You'd hang for that. Get back. I can see you from a that hole, and I can shoot you before you get me. You can't kill the whole Northwest Mounted Police Force, and you know it. So I don't think you'll shoot me. Go back, I tell you. 
Leave me alone. Sergeant Preston didn't break his stride. Despite Bill's threats, he quickly covered the remaining distance to the shack, placed one hand on the handle of his gun, and kicked open the door. Right, Steady, Bill. Let, let me go. Let me go, do you hear? As soon as I make sure you're unarmed. If I'd had a gun, I'd have shot you. Oh, I doubt that. How'd you get here? My dog followed your scent from Whitehorse. Who helped you get out of jail? I'm not talking. Did you know there was another murder today? Another murder? You're being hunted for it. I didn't kill anyone. I've never killed anyone. I don't know anything about a murder. Why do they say I'm guilty? You were found guilty of murder a year ago. The one today was handled in the same way. Moreover, the dead man was on the jury that convicted you a year ago, so there's a double motive. Revenge and robbery. I didn't do it, I tell you. I won't be taken alive. Steady. Oh, Stop fighting, you fool. I'll get loose. I've got him, King. Never mind, boy. Oh, my arm. Now behave yourself and listen to me. Now listen, Bill. I know you didn't kill Atterbury. Oh, you... You know it. Yes, and I'm the only one who knows it. You see, I followed your trail from the White Horse Jail. I know you came directly here. You were nowhere near White Pass. Oh, I see. I want to be sure you're not convicted of a second murder. I should never have been convicted of the first. I was innocent. I never killed or robbed anyone. It was a tight case against you last year. It was a frame-up. By whom? I don't know. Maybe you were broken out of jail so you could be framed a second time. Oh, no, it couldn't be that. Ah, then you were broken out. Someone helped you escape. I didn't say that. Who was it? Now, listen, Sergeant. Steve Murdoch, wasn't it? He... He's been the only one to call on you in jail. It's unlikely anyone else would help you. I... I don't want to make trouble for Steve. You came here without food. What'd you plan to eat? Did Murdoch promise to bring you supplies? Please don't ask me. Did he? Don't... Yes. That's what I wanted to hear. Come on. You're taking me back to jail? No, not right away. I want to keep you hidden while I do some investigating. Mrs. Morton lives a half mile from here. We'll go there. No, no, not there. I'm a convicted murderer. I can't face jail. You haven't spoken to the girl since her trial? I couldn't, Sergeant. Come along, Bill. You may be in for a surprise. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know what I've got in my hands right now? I've got those big red and blue packages of Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. Because I wanted to tell you, fellas and girls, something about the famous smiling Quaker man on the front of these packages. You know, he's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal. My, yes. my, but you're flattering. Yes, like I say... Huh? Who said that? Why, why, I did. You? Who are you? I'm the Quaker man on the package. You were just talking about me. I was, but, gee, I never expected you to say anything. Well, I I don't normally wish I could. You do? Yes. I wish I could say good morning to all the boys and girls and their families when they have me on their breakfast table. Well, that would be nice. But look, why not say hello now? Fine idea. Hello, boys and girls. When you see me smiling at you from the package, that's my way of saying good morning. And what's more, I'm mighty glad to see you enjoy those breakfasts of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, fellas and girls, there's the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Delicious, ready to serve wheat or rice shot from guns. Just remember to get these crisp, tender, king size grains exploded up to eight times normal size. Be sure to ask for crisp. Fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from gun. Now to continue. Sam Morton had built a good home on Spanner's Creek. When he died, he left enough gold to keep his wife and daughter comfortably. Both women welcomed Sergeant Preston and King and were delighted to see Bill Andrews out of jail. Jenny, you, you mean you're really glad to see me? Of course I am, Bill. I tried to visit you in jail, but you wouldn't see me. Well, I was a convict, Jenny. 
A convicted killer. Genin, I never believed that of you, Bill. Of course not. How did you get out, Bill? Bill is what? still in custody. Oh, you mean he's not free? Not yet. There's a chance that we might establish his innocence. That's why we came here. You ladies can help. How, Sergeant? Just tell us what to do. I want you to keep Bill here for a day or so while I do some investigating. Oh, of course we will. He's given his word he'll not try to escape, and it's good enough for me. Sergeant, your dog is... What is it, King? He's looking out the window. Must be someone coming up the hill. Steady, King. I'll take a look, boy. Someone coming, Sergeant? Yes, Bill. Constable Aiken and three other men. Constable. He's coming for me. Hey, that's Steve Murdoch with him. I thought so. The others are Pete Lacey and Joe Brent. They're friends of Steve. Mrs. Morton, what's beyond that door? A bedroom. In there, Bill. Stay out of sight. I'll handle this. Right. Whatever you say, Sergeant. The men have stopped outside. Not a word about Bill now. Whatever you say, Sergeant. Sergeant. The constable's coming here, but the others are going on uphill. Murdoch owns land above us. Yes, I know. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Come in, Constable Aiken. Oh, I didn't expect to find you here. Hello, Mrs. Morton and Jenny. Hello, Constable. When I reached Whitehorse, I heard the news. You mean the jailbreak? That and the murder. I suppose you figured Andrews had tried to hide out here with his friends. That's right. I guess you figured the same and got here first, eh? Where did Murdoch and the others go? They went on to Murdoch's place. We figured Bill might try to hide out there. Steve's finally convinced that he's a killer. Oh, Oh, no. Yes. Yes, he is, Jenny. It took a lot to turn Steve Murdoch against him. We'll have an airtight case against him when he's tried for Lamb Atterbury's murder. Where did that happen? When was he killed? Early this morning at White Pass. That's why Bill broke out of jail last night. He knew Lem would come through the pass today with a load of pay dirt. How did he know it? Lem had an assay made a couple of months ago. Told Steve that he'd come in today with all the gold he could collect. He wanted to catch the first boat for the States. Steve passed the news to Bill? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago when he visited the jail. Well, that's not much evidence, Constable. Well, there's more, Sergeant. This button was found on Lem's sled. Huh? When we find Bill Andrews, we'll see if it matches the one on his coat. Father, what's the matter with you, Jenny? Oh, it's... It's just that I can't... I I won't believe Bill's a murderer. You see, Constable, Bill still has friends. Yeah. Well, I guess you'd have found Andrews if he was hiding here. I'll go up to Steve's property and see if he's there. I'll wait here, Reagan. Stop on your way back and let me know what you find. I'll do that. Goodbye, all. Goodbye. Mother, Sergeant Preston... That button came from Bill's coat. Oh, I saw it, Jenny. For a minute, I thought you'd give Bill away. Come on out, Bill. I heard what was said. That button did come off my coat. And it was found in a dead man's sled. You weren't near the sled, so it must have been placed there to frame you. But who... Only one man could have taken that button off your coat, Bill. The man who helped you escape from jail. Steve Murdoch. That's right. The man who told the constable he was finally convinced that you were guilty. He must have wanted to frame me. That's why he helped me escape. Why he told me to hide at the abandoned shed where I have no alibi. And he could have framed me the last time, too. He could have left my... Bill Andrews was stunned by the realization of Steve Murdoch's duplicity. During the next hour, he and Sergeant Preston discussed the situation. Then, when the constable was seen returning from the Murdoch claim, Bill was once more hidden in the bedroom. Come right in, Constable. Wait there, Murdoch. I'll just be a minute. Right. Sergeant, we found some things at the Murdoch place. Yes? Bill wasn't there, but he'd been there. We found tracks. Two men and a dog. I was wondering... Find anything else? This. Well, what is it, Constable? A tobacco sack. It has Bill's name written on it in pencil. Inside, there's a couple of ounces of gold dust. My guess is that it'll prove up the same quality as the gold from Lem Atterbury's claim. Where was it? On the floor of a tool shed. Looks like Bill dropped it in his rush to get away. You are sure Bill was in the tool shed? Well, there was evidence to show it. Cigarette butts on the floor, and they were made the way Bill always makes them. That tobacco sack was left in the shed after Bill had left. What? what? So, so you were there? What did Murdoch think of the tracks in the snow? Well, he figured Bill saw someone coming and lit out. I had a hunch the tracks were yours, but I couldn't tell if you were with Bill or trailing him. We were together. I brought him here. Here? Yes, here. Come out, Bill. So there you are. That's right, Constable. Aiken, Bill did not kill Atterbury. I know that for a fact. 
And I'm beginning to think he was innocent of the other murder. All that evidence must have been framed. I'll try to prove it, Bill. I'll outline a plan as quickly as possible. Now listen carefully. Sergeant Preston talked rapidly, and his plan won the instant approval of the constable. Then Aiken left the Morton house and returned to Goldville. That evening found Murdoch alone in his home in town. His reading was interrupted by a rap on the door. He was surprised to see Bill Andrews. Bill, you here in town? Yeah, I, I need help. I went to the shack on Spanner's Creek, but you weren't there. I had to clear out. A Mountie was coming towards your place. He must have suspected I'd hide there. You managed to get away from him. I've got to keep on the move. I need food and supplies. I need some money. Have uh, you heard anything about Lem Atterbury? How could I hear about anyone? I've had to keep under cover. Well, what, what about him? Oh, never mind. It's not important. I'll help you, Bill. Thanks, Steve. I knew I could count on you. Come back here in an hour, and I'll have food and supplies for the trail as well as snowshoes. In an hour. Can you find a place to hide for that long? Sure. Be back in one hour. Leaving Murdoch's house, Bill joined Sergeant Preston, King, and the constable who were waiting not far off. He'll fix a pack for me. And make sure of an airtight frame-up. That's what I'm counting on. I guess there's nothing we can do but wait. Steve made hurried preparations. From a cupboard, he took a gun, a parka, and some blankets that had belonged to the dead man. Then, one of the stolen sacks of gold. He wrapped the gold inside the blankets and made a tight bundle. Next, he hurried to a nearby cafe where he knew he could find Pete and Joe. He brought them back to his home and told of Bill's visit. And he'll be back here in a few minutes to get that bundle. Now, you two wait in the other room. When he gets into the parka and the blanket's tied to his back, shoot him and shoot to kill. Here, Steve? Yes. I'll say he came here demanding food and waving a gun at me. He thought I was alone. You two shot him and saved my life. Does he have a gun? I'll put this one of Lem's in his hand. Good. The park and the blankets were Lem's, and some of the stolen gold will be found inside the blankets. <laughs> it'll be airtight. Yeah, I hate to give away some of the gold, but it'll be worthwhile to keep us in the clear. When do we split what's left? Tomorrow. Hey, he's here. Get into the next room. Come on, Pete. Right. I'll let him in. Hello, Bill. Steve, did you get the things I asked for? I sure did. They're right on that table. Come on in and try on your parka. Yeah. Yeah, we'll all come in, you crook. What? He said we'd all come in. Aiken! Yes, and Sergeant Preston. Back up, Murdoch. I see here. Hey, Bill, what's this mean? It means you're through. Open that bundle, Constable. We'll see what's there. Oh, no, you... Hold it! Oh. That was a fool move, Murdoch. You should know better than to pull a gun on Sergeant Preston. Leave it on the floor. Keep back, Murdoch. I'll examine the bundle. Look here, Sergeant. The parka. It has Lem Atterbury's name on it. How do you account for the possession of it, Murdoch? I'm not talking. These are Lem's blankets, too. And there's something wrapped inside of them. What is it? A sack. It's heavy. Feels like gold. That's what I'd hoped for. How do you account for that gold, Murdoch? And for Atterbury's blankets and his parka? I told you I'm not talking. You killed Atterbury and you tried to frame Bill Andrews. You didn't overlook a single opportunity to add to the evidence against him. That's what we counted on when we sent Bill here tonight to ask for help. Oh, so that's it. It was all a put-up job. You figured on getting me for a murder charge. Well, let me tell you this. All you've done is sign your death warrant. Don't talk like a fool. Fool, am I? You'll see. Come on in, boys. We've got him covered. Get your hands up. Drop that gun. It's the two who went to Spanner's Creek with Steve. Constable, it looks as though we have three killers instead of one. We'll keep him covered, Steve. See if they got any more guns. Well, I get Lem's gun. So you stole his gun, too, eh? This is it, Lawman. Don't you suppose your guns will be heard? Sure. <laughs> and when people come to find out about the shooting, I'll tell them you followed Bill Andrews here. Andrews got both of you, and we got Andrews. There's a dog outside. Well, look who's at the door. Hey, look out! Hey, oh, Sergeant Preston had moved so the table stood between him and the three who held guns. He acted with lightning speed when the outlaw cast a split-second glance toward the door. He upended the table in the faces of Steve and his companions and then charged while they were off balance. In an instant, Bill and Aiken joined the fight. I'll get you, Marty. I'll kill you. Up that gun or I'll break your wrist. No, you won't. It was a hand-to-hand -hand fight with no quarter given and none asked. A fight with death, the penalty for losing. The odds were even until Preston got one hand free and drove it like a sledgehammer to Steve. Murdoch, yeah. That should hold you. Preston! Bill was down. Joe had lost his gun but gripped a knife. It was poised for the death blow. As the blade descended toward Bill's throat, a gun spoke sharply. Oh. The outlaw's hand went limp. He dropped the knife and stared stupidly at his helpless, broken arm while Bill scrambled nimbly to his feet. What about you, Constable? I've got this one there. No. 
bad, does it? What's wrong outside? Oh, it's King. Guard these men. I'll let him in. Right, Sergeant. All right. Take it easy, King. There's nothing for you to do, boy. Just look him over and see if you approve. King will be sore because he wasn't in on the fight. Well, I have a job for King to do. Give me that sack of gold. Here. Here, boy. Oh. At the center of this bag and see if you can tell me where it came from. My arm's broken. Can't you do something? We'll take care of it before we move you. Oh, oh. oh Murdoch's regaining consciousness. You better keep him covered. I'll put handcuffs on him and Pete. Hey, look at King. He's sniffing at that cupboard there. In there, eh, King? Thanks, boy. Well... More sacks of gold. And, Bill, they didn't all come from Lem Atterbury. Sergeant, do you think... Constable, I'm sure this solves the murder of a year ago. We didn't have no part in that job. Murdoch handled that one alone. Why, you dirty punk! That's enough, Murdoch. Do you hear that, Sergeant? you hear that? He says Murdoch killed that man. That's right, Bill. Well, don't feel put out, King. You've done your part, boy. Your bark outside the door was a big help, and you found the gold. The murder of a year ago was solved, and our friend Bill is cleared. In addition to that, fella, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. My wife told me to take this one. Say, are you trying to decide whether to get Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice? <laughs> yes, and I like both so much. Well, that... go ahead and get both. Don't miss out on either of these delicious, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. Good idea. I'll get a supply of both kinds. Sure. Then eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. And that reminds me... Of what? To remind all the fellas and girls of a wonderful surprise for them that's coming next Monday. A surprise? Can't you even give them a hint? I can only say that every single one of you listeners is getting in on something terrific that won't cost you an extra penny. It's something you're getting from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the delicious, nourishing cereal shot from guns. So be listening... And tell your friends to listen. That's Monday. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Blind Man's Buff. When King and I started out to lead a relief train through the mountain passes to Wilderness Creek, we knew it would be a fight every inch of the way. But we didn't realize we would run into murder on the trail, nor that deep in the heart of the mountains in the dead of night... Our camp would be attacked by both wolves and killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long.